This is the course Mechanical Vibrations. In this presentation, we will cover two degrees of freedom systems. My name is Carmen Miller Carter. Some figures and content are adapted from our textbook from Mechanical Vibrations from Rao, and the content is from chapter five and six. This presentation deals with the two degrees of freedom, which requires two independent coordinates to describe the motion. The couple equation of motion of the systems are derived using Newton's second law of motion. We will express the equations in matrix form and find the mass, damping, and stiffness matrix of the system. We will solve the eigenvalue and the eigenvector problem to find the natural frequencies of the system and the vibration modes. We will learn how to calculate the response for initial conditions for external forces, harmonic, periodic, and non-periodic forces. The learning objectives of these presentations are the following. Formulate the equation of motion of a two degree of freedom system. Identify the mass, damping, and stiffening matrices from the equation of motion. We will compute the eigenvalues or natural frequencies of the system and the modal vectors by solving the eigenvector problem. We will determine the free vibration solution using known initial conditions. We will understand the concepts of coordinate coupling and principal coordinates. We will determine the force vibration solution under harmonic motion by two methods using the generalized coordinates and the principal coordinates. We will find the equation of motion and principal coordinates and find the solution for the decoupled system of two equations. And we will understand the behaviors of an unrestrained mechanical system. We define the degrees of freedom of a system as the minimum number of independent coordinates required to determine completely the position of all parts of the system at any instant of time. The number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of masses in the system and the number of possible type of motion of each mass. Let's look at this single degree of freedom system. For example, here we have a coil that can move through this bar. The position of this coil could be described either by this angular displacement or by this linear displacement. Since it's just one degree of freedom system, we will choose only one coordinate. In this case, we have only displacement and the degree of freedom will be described by this displacement variable. Here we have only rotation, therefore the variable that we choose is a rotation variable. In these two degrees of freedom system, we have two masses, therefore we need two coordinates, and in this case it's linear displacement, so we choose x1 and x2. Here we have two disks that have mass moment of inertia, and then we need two angular displacements, theta1 and theta2. In this third case, we have a block that moves linearly, and we can choose a linear variable to describe that motion. And then we have this pendulum. The displacement of this mass can be described either with the rotation of the bar or the linear displacement of the bar. Or it can be also described by the vertical position of the bar. As you see, we have three possibilities, but since it's a two degrees of freedom system, we will just choose this variable that describes the displacement of the mass and either of the ones that we said that we can describe the motion of the pendulum. Finally, we have system of three degrees of freedom. Here we have three pendulum and we could choose to describe the motion of this three degrees of freedom system with theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 or x1, x2, and x3 or y1, y2, and y3 or we can actually choose a combination of any of these variables, but at the most, we can only choose three variables to completely describe the position of all parts of the system. In this figure, we have an automobile that can be idealized as a bar of mass m, a mass moment of inertia respect to the center of gravity equals to j sub c. And then we have the suspensions that are in the wheels that are simulated as k1 and k2. The displacement of this vehicle can be described either with the displacement of the center of mass 
and the rotation respect to the center of mass that we can call a pitch or we can describe it actually also with the displacement of the two ends of the bar or we can use a combination of those displacement or rotation to describe the motion of our vehicle. So in conclusion, we can say that an end degree of freedom system requires n independent coordinates that describes its configuration. And it is possible to have different set of coordinates to describe the motion of the system. Each of these sets of n coordinates is what is called generalized coordinates. So in the example where we were talking about, where we have the car idealized as a two degrees of freedom system, we will have different possibilities. So the first set of generalized coordinates could be x1 and x2, describing the two ends of the bar, or it could be the deflection of the center of gravity and the rotation of the bar, or another set could be one of the end of the bar and the rotation, or it could be another set the rotation of the bar plus the displacement of the other end of the bar. Any of the sets of generalized coordinates are valid and choosing one with respect to the other one is only a convenience depending on what we need to study regarding the motion of that system. If we choose one set of the coordinates to describe our motion of the system, we can get the equation of motion. Let's choose the displacement of the center of gravity and the rotation of the bar respect to that center of gravity. If we do so, we add forces in y direction and we get, this is our free body diagram, we get the force done by the spring, which will be equals to the spring times the displacement of that point in terms of the variable that we chose to describe our motion. This is the force that we have for that spring and this is the force that we have for the other spring. The two forces will be equals to mass time acceleration in the negative direction. This is the first equation that we get and then we add moment respect to the center of gravity to get our second equation. Therefore we have to multiply the force of the spring times the length of the bar respect to the center of gravity and this force of the spring times this length which is L2 and that will be equals to the mass moment of inertia respect to the center of gravity times the angular acceleration. We put everything in one side of the equation and we get the two equations of motion. As you see the equation of motion of the variable x is also a function of theta and the equation of motion of the rotation of the bar is actually also a function of x. So those are what you call couple equations dependent to each other. If we like to write these two equations in matrix form, we will have one matrix that multiplies the two variables for acceleration, one matrix that multiplies the two variables describing the displacement. The mass that multiplies the vector of acceleration is the mass matrix and the matrix that this multiplies the displacement vector is the stiffness matrix and describes the springs involved in the system. As you see, here we have a diagonal matrix for mass. It means that the system is not coupled in the inertia components. So we see that this M comes from this one right here and this zero is because this equation right here doesn't have the angular acceleration. And in the second equation we don't have the acceleration in the X component and then we have the mass moment of inertia that multiplies the angular acceleration. In the case of the stiffness matrix we have a couple. It means that the first equation has the variable in angular displacement and the second equation has the component in the x coordinate. This vector over here describes our set of generalized 
coordinates that we chose to describe the motion of our system. And this one right here would be this vector derived twice to get the acceleration vector. Let's choose another example. Here we have two masses, M1 and M2, and the coordinates x1 and x2 define the position of these masses at all times respect to the equilibrium position. The external forces F1 is applied to the first mass M1, and the force F2 is applied to the mass M2. Here we have the free body diagrams, and that allow us to get the equation of motion. So if we add forces in the first free body diagram, we have the force of the damper and the force of this spring negative, and then we have positive the force of this spring and the force of this damper. Notice that the force of this spring is the constant of the spring times the relative motion between the two masses. And the damper is the constant of the damper times the relative velocity between the two masses. And here we have the third spring and the third damper. If we put that all in one side of the equation, this is the two equations of motions that we have for our system. And these two equations can be put in matrix form and we will have something like that, where we have the mass matrix, we have the damping matrix, and we have the stiffness matrix equals to the vector that describes the force applied to the system. Our generalized coordinates vector will be x1, which describes the motion of mass 1, and x2, which describes the motion of the second mass. Then here we have the equation of motion in matrix form, and now as we said, M, C, and K are called mass, damping, and stiffness matrices. The vector X measures the displacement of my two masses, and this vector is composed by the generalized coordinates that we chose to describe the motion of our system, and F, which is the vector of the external forces. Very important, again, these metrics are, have to be always symmetric, and notice that they are only diagonal if the system is not coupled, in this case, inertia, but this system is coupled in terms of damping, and is coupled in terms of stiffness. In conclusion, an uh, equation of motion of a viscously damped two degrees of freedom system has the equation of motion of the following form. A mass matrix multiplied by the acceleration vector, a damping matrix multiplied by the velocity vector, plus a stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement vector equals to the vector of external forces. This matrix ha could have all the components and have the following characteristics. All three metrics are symmetric, so this term is equal to that term, this term is equal to that term, and this term is equal to this term. And this equation reveals the type of couplings present. If the stiffness metric is not diagonal, then the system has elastic of static coupling. If the damping metric is not diagonal, the system has damping or velocity coupling. And if the mass metric is not diagonal, the system has mass or inertia coupling. Both velocity and mass coupling came under the heading of dynamic coupling. For free vibrations, the system will vibrate at its own natural frequency, and this is regardless of the set of coordinates that we choose. The choice of a set of coordinates respect to another is mere convenience of what we want to study. If the system is harmonically excited, then the system will vibrate to the forcing frequency, independently of the set of generalized coordinates that we choose. This is then the equation of motion of an n degree of freedom system. We will study two degrees of freedom system. And the response will be equals to the homogeneous response, which is a function of the initial conditions plus the particular solution, which is depending on the external force that the system is subjected to. 
we will use two methods. The first one will be finding the response of the two degrees of freedom system, solving the system of equation in terms of the generalized coordinates that we chose to describe our system. And the second method will be using the principal coordinates. In that case, we'll have to decouple the system of equation, finding the solution in the principal coordinates as a two, one degree of freedom system, and then finding the response of our generalized coordinates in terms of our principal coordinates.